Hey guys, Leanna here. We're hunting the mad devil in Far Cry 4. But we still have our mountain. We are still surrounded by mountains. And it was quite a weekend, so we're gonna need a lot of zen. So, everybody ready? Mountain, pick a mountain of your choice. We have lots of mountains. Lots of mountains to be zen on. And breathe in. And out. And breathe in. And out. Okay, because it was quite a weekend, wasn't it? It was quite a weekend online to, to, you know, talk about video games. We had two minor scandals in very, in, in, you know, very close proximity to each other. One happened on Friday with Lionhead Studios on National Cleavage Day or Happy National Cleavage Day or whatever the heck the hashtag was. And... Then we got it again with, uh, with Obsidian being accused of transphobia because of the text of a tombstone that apparently wasn't even written by the developers. It was written by a Kickstarter backer. It was, you know, it, it was one of those, it was pretty much a product placement. It was a crowdfunding product placement. I'll call it that. And so people flipped out and it got really ugly. And while I'm recording this, because I record these in advance because YouTube uploads are so freaking slow. Right now, we don't know whether Obsidian is going to pull the content or not. And this is happening so often that I get that it's easy to lose your zen in these trying times. So I'm trying to, you know, give, give you guys an opportunity to sort of center and let's talk this out. Let's talk this out. Personally, because I, I believe in, in, you know, consumer advocacy, you guys know this. I'll, I'll tell you what I think. I'm, I'm not gonna check myself to, you know, worrying about being blacklisted or anything like that. I, pfft, most major developers don't already return my emails, so, you know, it's all good. Most, you know, y you can't do that because at this point, nobody gets any access except, you know, not even the major sites. I, you know, I contact uh, developers saying, hey, I write for this major website, and they still don't return my emails, so I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna curry favor, it just gets you nowhere. So, you know, but I also care about artistic advocacy, and they are slightly different, and you are scary. They're slightly different, they are slightly different. There's a point in time where myself as a consumer says, who the hell am I to tell a developer how to do their job? Um, I'll tell them when I like something, I'll tell them when I don't like something, but it's their game, right? Or it's, it's you know, someone else's novel or someone else's TV show. You know, do I expect the Big Bang Theory to, to change one of its most popular characters because I don't like Sheldon? No, I'm just not gonna watch a freaking show. That, that's my choice as a consumer. Ah, uh, this is gonna fail again because I'm out of arrows. This sucks. Run, run, run. Stop it, Bitey McBiterson. This is what it's like being on Twitter these days, by the way. There we go. Okay. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell a developer to change something. That's presumptuous, right? That's, I'll dare to even say the word entitled. I don't like it when people do it to me because it's usually ignorant as anything. And it, you know, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do it to a developer. And if I've done it in the past inadvertently, that was wrong of me. 
and I'm, I'm willing to admit, you know, nobody should do it. Nobody should do that crap. Why? And I've had, I've had developers argue me on this. It's like, well, people get, people speak stridently when they're angry. Well, okay, a lot of people are assholes. Doesn't mean I have to duplicate it, right? So, that, that's the thing, is that saying that you don't personally like something or something had a bad impact on you, that's cool. Uh, that's, that's totally fair for somebody to say. It's, it's factual, you know, it's the truth. It's fine, right? No problem. That, that's public discourse. That's public discussion. But I don't remember where to go over these stupid things. I'm lost. But, you know, telling someone, going so far as saying something needs changing or, or saying something uh, must change, you're going to boycott or, or something like that. The boycott thing drives me crazy. It makes me lose my zen. Because boycotts imply that someone represents an organization. It's an overstatement. Saying me and my friends aren't going to buy your game isn't a boycott. Boycotts are organized consumer messages, right? It's a large enough group of people deciding not to buy something. That's a boycott. Boycotts very rarely work. I think they worked back in the 80s at one point, and people keep doing them, even though what they call boycotts now are not really boycotts. They're just people not buying stuff. And I don't know how these, these people manage to complain about the details of something when they're not buying something, because they sure seem to know the ins and outs of something that they're not buying. Which means they're stealing the content somehow. I mean, they're pirating or, or downloading or something like that. That pause was a tea break. I need tea to keep my zen. But, you know, I start going, you cross a line when you demand a developer do something to suit you. And we saw that, that right now, as I'm recording this, we don't know what the Obsidian thing is. Uh, we don't know what the outcome's going to be, whether they're going to remove the content from the game or not. But the tweet from Lionhead, and we'll, we'll get down into the, the, the specifics of that image and whether or not it was bad on, on Tata's Tuesday, because it does involve boobs. Um, what, what the Lionhead tweet was, was they put up some old concept art of a barmaid, you know, an Oktoberfest style barmaid with, you know, rather large steins, um, rather large beer mugs, if you will, and then a lot of sweater meat behind it. And people freaked out, and there were members of the press involved. But what I noticed is that the thing got something like, by the time, you know, people started screen grabbing it you know, screen grabbing the controversy, it had like 500 likes and 450 retweets, right? So the number of people who enjoyed it and got the joke outnumbered the people who were offended, right? So I gotta wonder, oh, I missed that takedown. I keep forgetting to do that. You know, I, I gotta wonder if, if this actually makes sense when you got 500 people going, like it, and a few dozen getting angry and saying you're a terrible human being. Are you really serving the consumer by listening to the few instead of listening to the many? If the majority of people got the joke, then, you know, it, is it really fair to ruin their fun and, and imply, you know, that they were wrong to not be offended? by catering to the minority. This is a, whoa, you just ran over your buddy. This is, you know, something we're, we're going to have to address as a community because if people start watering down and whitewashing artistic product because they're afraid a few dozen people are gonna squawk we're going to get lousy art. Like, that's, that's a consumer good at that point. You're, you're pretty much, it's a post-launch focus group at that point. It's not an artistic vision. 
And yes, AAA companies have to be careful. They have to set a balance because they have to sell a bazillion copies. You know, I think it's ridiculous that a game has to sell 7 million copies now to be considered a success. It's silly. But that, them's the breaks, you know. But I don't have to support the endeavor. I don't have to support the trend as as a, you know, a gaming aficionado. I don't have to buy into it as a gamer. So, whoa, hello, Mr. Rhinoceros. This is what it's like trying to have a discussion about gaming now. All hell breaks loose and you get charged. Hey, yes, okay. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this is somebody who gets artistic criticism, right? Some people don't like the that. They don't like what just happened. They don't like the fact that, oh, I stopped what I was talking about to, to kill a charging rhino because it happened to be happening in the game I'm playing live while I'm talking to all of you. Some people hate that. It's got to be tighter. It needs to be tighter. Well, no, it doesn't. Because guess what? I already do other kinds of stuff elsewhere. I do more professional essays and, and you know, audio files on other topics. And people find what to complain about too, but you know, at least the criticism isn't your, your drawing of a dog should have been a cat, zero out of 10, right? So that's, that's the stuff that I'm like, no, we can't do that. Because once we start saying it's okay to do that, then it makes it very, very hard to really know who to listen to. And that's important. Oh, did you guys see that? Did you see the rhino take out that car? That was pretty awesome. Uh, I'm gonna make quick work of this. And that's why I love Far Cry 4. <laughs> because you can do that. That was awesome. But see, some people would go, Oh my god, you just killed an endangered species. That's so offensive. You know what? You're right. It is offensive. And that's the point. That's the whole immersive element of this game because I just killed a human being there too. Are we really going to get into an ethical discussion about, well, okay, here's the thing. In my mind, killing this rhinoceros was more ethically wrong than killing that person, right? But that's my line. Other people would disagree with me and that's an innocent person and I don't know who killed him, but it could have been me. And that's the glorious part about this game, is this, the, the Far Cry games take place in a failed state. And they, they really effectively show you how horrible stuff gets when, you know, you, you're getting your money from the drug trade. I'm, oh, no, I didn't miss. You should blow up by now. And, you know, you're, you're having to make critical decisions like, what's worse, child marriage or a drug economy? Oh, yes, check this out. Yes, thank you, Rhino. Thank you for your help. See, he heard me. The Rhino heard me. And he knows that I find his life precious. So he came to my aid against that flamethrower dude. But see, somebody, some people hate that, that interlude, that interruption. They want it to be a single topic. Well, here's the thing. I do that elsewhere. The purpose of these videos is one you know let's face it people got to show they play and love games to to have the right to to suggest opinion on games and that's part of what the purpose of this youtube channel is that you know you got you guys are seeing my unvarnished reactions to things you're seeing my yeah that was awesome in moments and and things like that you're you're seeing that i do enjoy these things and, and I can play games and talk at the same time. I have that level of proficiency that I don't completely suck. I only sort of suck while trying to maintain a train of thought while playing a game. But the other thing I, I want is that, you know, even people in gamer freaking Gazi go, well, she seems calmer in these videos. Well, yeah, because I'm playing a video game. Because, you know, it's, I'm, I'm being, whoa, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I'm being more casual. 
I'm having a conversation. I'm not, whoa, writing an essay. I'm not, uh, yeah, you run away. I'm not writing an essay. I'm not trying to, you know, the rhetorical devices and all that stuff. I'm, I'm not thinking so hard about it. And that's the entire purpose of these videos. So you get to see a candid side of me. So you know that when you read my more structured stuff, I'm, I'm not, you know, one of these slavering keyboard warriors. You get a sense of who I am as a person, and I think that's very important to people. People, especially now, need to know that the gaming press understands them and understands their, the, the products they're talking about and can have fun in a game. Because I don't know about you guys, I personally can't trust someone's opinion if they don't seem to be having fun while playing games.